Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name's Caroline Widowson and I'm the Market Development Manager at Marks International. I'm going to give you a brief overview of the initial studies we have recently carried out in collaboration with Agilent Technologies on the development of sampling and analysis methodology using thermal desorption GCMS for the identification of volatile PFAS compounds in air. Per and polyfluoroalkyl substance manufacturing began in the 1940s, where they gained popularity for their resistance to heat and staining. Unfortunately, these are the very properties that make them problematic. PFAS are considered environmental pollutants and have been associated with different types of cancer, developmental toxicity and immunotoxicity. Currently, there are no standardised test methods for volatile PFAS in air and the wide variety of parameters are being evaluated. We can see from these recent media articles, all published within the last two months, the high visibility this group of analytes is receiving. And while trace PFAS in air is clearly concerning from a health and environmental perspective, the analytical air monitoring world is already prepared to address this. Modern analytical thermal desorption GCMS systems were specifically designed for monitoring trace level organics in air. The recent automated thermal desorption technology can now do this for more and more challenging compounds, and we'll illustrate this during the presentation. There are a number of considerations to take into account when carrying out air monitoring procedures. These are relevant for traditional TDGCMS VOC methods, for example, TO17, as well as for reliably quantitating emerging contaminants such as PFAS. The ease and reliability of sampling procedures is key to ensure confidence in your results, combined with the need to securely transport your sample from the field to the laboratory. Non-targeted air samples contain a wide range of compounds varying in volatility and concentration. To ensure that we achieve high sensitivity of these trace level compounds, procedures need to be implemented to ensure low background and effective water management of the samples. Method validation is carried out to ensure good linearity, reproducibility and repeatability using several PFAS standards covering the wide range of species within this broad family of man-made compounds. Automated cryogen-free unattended operation improves productivity and validation using internal standard addition adds further confidence to the results. It's been estimated that the PFAS family may include approximately five to 10,000 chemicals. These synthetic organofluorine chemical compounds have multiple fluorine atoms attached to an alkyl chain or a fluorinated tail. In our study, we chose a selection of 18 standard compounds to validate the method. These 18 compounds represent a range from various species that are compatible with GCMS analysis. We chose 11 perfluorinated carboxylic acids and four fluorotelomers, which are the volatile precursors to the PFCAs. It's key to note that techniques used for PFAS analysis from water, for example, LCMS, struggle with these volatile species with a chain length below C8 and specifically classes such as fluorotelomer alcohols. We also added some perfluoroalkane sulfonamides and sulfonamide alcohols, and then added a semi-volatile fluorotelomer acrylate. For this application, we decided to use one of our standard hydrophobic material emissions tubes. We tested the breakthrough volume at ambient temperature, and for this tube, we found that it exceeded 50 litres for all of the PFCAs, and was over 20 litres for all of the compounds contained in the standard. We took a sample in a parking garage using an Activop Plus pump sampling at 100 ml per minute, taking a total volume of 20 litres. For those of you unfamiliar with thermal desorption, let me just quickly explain the process. Sample tubes are placed into the thermal desorber and leak checked prior to being heated in a flow of inert carrier gas. This releases the retained compounds and transfers them onto a narrow, electrically cooled focusing trap. During this process, a portion of the sample can be split and recollected onto a clean absorbent tube. 
This can be used to store a pressure sample, to validate the methodology, or to ensure efficiency of the method. For example, the complete desorption of the tube. This really is key to ensure good practice, validate the results, and ensure robust methodology. For this study, we used an off-the-shelf focusing trap typically used for air monitoring applications. Subsequent rapid heating of the TD instrument's internal focusing trap in a reverse flow of carrier gas transfers the volatiles and semi-volatile organic compounds to the GC column in a narrow band. And this is what ensures those sharp peaks and a high level of sensitivity. This back flush operation of the tubes and the traps makes elimination of water via dry purge procedure an extremely effective water management tool, which improves that sensitivity and extends the instrument and column lifetime. Another consideration whilst analysing PFAS is the possible need to look not only for the compounds emitted from the products, but also the byproducts or breakdown compounds. Two types of methodology are traditionally used for these. One is an offline, non-targeted, high throughput method that utilizes sorbent tubes, and that's the focus of today's presentation. But this can be combined with an online or canister sampler capable of sampling and analyzing the very volatile breakdown products. The Marks Agilent system shown here can combine these two sampling techniques on one platform. From our chromatogram of our standard mix of 18 compounds, we can see that we have great separation and excellent peak shape for a wide range of volatile and semi-volatile PFAS compounds over a broad concentration range. For this work, we used a Marx TD100XR automated thermal dissolver and an Agilent 8890GC and 5977B MSD. So we now know that using current technology with off-the-shelf sampling devices, we can sample volatile PFAS in air. We can separate a wide range of compounds. But how much can we detect with a TDGC single quad mass spec? As you can see, we've achieved great detection limits below 1 PPT for all of the PFCAs and below 3 PPT for all of the compounds within the standard. The next steps of validating a method are to evaluate the linearity, reproducibility and repeatability, which you can see in the graphs on this slide, and they're well within the desired range. In addition, no carryover was observed for any of the tested PFAS compounds, and really importantly, no system contribution was detected. In analytical methods for the measurement of PFAS in water, there have been concerns raised about the inherent instrument contribution of PFAS compounds, and as such, certain materials have been highlighted as possible areas of concern. With that in mind, we carried out extensive studies to ensure no background contribution was seen. And in fact, that's also been verified by the leading experts in PFAS analysis at the US EPA. As I mentioned in the previous slides, advanced thermal desorption GCMS systems have the capability to split the sample and recollect this split portion onto a clean adsorbent tube for subsequent analysis, either immediately or at a later date. This process is referenced in many standard methods as a technique for validating analyte recovery throughout the analytical process. The data in this slide illustrates the analysis of a sample that's been split, recollected, reanalyzed multiple times and it shows excellent correlation with a theoretical value and a real value demonstrating no loss or system contribution during the analysis of PFAS. Finally we come to the real sample simulation that was carried out in order to evaluate the performance of the method. The sorbent tube was spiked with a known amount of PFAS standard mix and then 20 litres of outdoor air from the parking garage was sampled onto the tube and subsequently analysed using thermal desorption GCMS in a scan sim mode. We can see in this slide the three chromatograms. The top one showing the total ion chromatogram of a complex real sample. 
followed by the extracted iron chromatogram from a SIM mode to identify and quantitate the specific PFAS compounds at parts per trillion level. And then finally, with the standard run shown at the bottom to confirm the identification of the compounds and to show no shift in the retention time. If we zoom in on some of the analytes, we can determine some differences in the concentration of some of the target PFAS compounds between the spiked blank tube and the spiked sample tube. These higher values of the sample to blank suggest the presence of the analyte in the sampled air. So in summary, we have shown the use of traditional TD GCMS technology is capable of identifying volatile PFAS compounds in air at part per trillion levels. We've done this by demonstrating excellent linearity and repeatability and storage stability. TDGCMS technology provides a robust solution for this analysis with features such as leak testing, dry purge for water management, internal standard addition, and recollection for data validation, ensuring a high confidence in the data obtained. The next stage for future development is to optimize sorbent selection to allow larger sample volumes and to configure the thermal desorption system with advanced detectors such as triple quads or time of flights to improve the sensitivity and compound identification. I'd like to thank Agilent Technologies for their collaboration with this project and for the full analytical conditions of this study, please contact us. Thank you very much for your attention.